from the Book Tart. I'd like to tell you about a few books that I've read recently. In fact, one of them I read last night. I stayed up. Um, I started this book at 10 p.m. last night, and I stayed up till 2 a.m. in the morning and finished it. I had to finish it. I absolutely positively could not go to bed with this book undone. So, what book am I talking about? It's Fury of Fire by Corrine Callahan, and this book is a paranormal romance. Um, it has dragons and a huge conflict between the good dragons and the bad dragons, and a beautiful romance, very steamy and fun. And Okay, so the main character's name is Mist. She's the heroine, and she is an OBGYN nurse, and she travels to people's houses and checks up on them and makes sure they're okay. And she loves her job. Um, and Bastion is the leader of the Good Dragons. And he's been fighting this epic battle for well over a hundred years and their ranks are diminishing. And so to set a good example for his people, he has decided that he is going to find a woman to mate with this there's a special name for it, but it's their time of the year where they can sire a child. He hates the idea of it. He doesn't want to do it because he, in their history, um, all the mothers of the new dragon babies die in childbirth. And he doesn't want to do it. But for the sake of his people and for their future, he's trying to psych himself up to do it. Um, so you feel his conflict and his pain, and he's a good guy. He appreciates women. He doesn't want to take from them. He doesn't want a meaningless relationship. So Bastian has been keeping an eye, he and his, his warriors have been keeping an eye on this young um, pregnant woman whose baby is fathered by a dragon, one of the ones who's on the bad side, they think. So they've been keeping an eye on her to see if they can help her in any way. And so they were listening to the 911 call that Mist calls in when she arrives at this girl's house and finds her in a pool of blood. And this girl asks her to save the baby because it's too late for her. So Mist performs emergency surgery and she's holding the baby when Bastion walks in. Bastion feels an immediate connection to her. There's this thing called... Um, energy force they feed from energy from women who are connected to the universe and they can siphon off some of that energy to strengthen themselves um, to connect into the universe energy and she's very very connected and he feels that that power there and also the strength of character she is he sees the warrior in her as she's trying to protect the baby and what she had to do to um, bring the baby into the world. He admires her. So you like that. You like that he doesn't just um, want her for mm, some chemical reaction, but he admires her as a person. And the bad guys are coming after the baby too, and so he has to shapeshift into a dragon to protect her, and it freaks Miss out. She's thinking she's crazy and she realizes she isn't and she's in some sort of bad nightmare and she tries to get away um, and he has to go after her fly after her and bring her to his lair and so there's the cat and mouse between them basically <laughs> um, building their relationship seeing if they can trust each other seeing what will come of that there is his fear that if he bonds with someone he will eventually lose them if they you know, if she got pregnant. Uh, so they have to deal with that possibility and try to find resolutions. And of course, there's the bad guys. There's Ivar, who's in charge of the um, bad dragons, and they consider humans basically a plague on the earth, and they want to get rid of humans. But until dragons can give birth to more than just baby boys, male dragons, they still need some humans around, so he's trying to figure out a way for, he's working with genetics, he's a scientist, he's playing with a way for 
dragons to give birth to female babies um, or a human to give birth to a female dragon and then eventually they wouldn't need humans anymore so there's that subplot and he's pretty scary totally immoral no conscience the fight scenes in this book are epic they read like like you're watching a movie with the dragon zooming in and out and picking up vehicles and tossing them and shooting fire and and ice and the love scenes are beautiful and steamy um, I really like the dynamic between Mist and Bastion I like the secondary characters the warriors in his kingdom or his little well his lair <laughs> there's uh, they're interesting guys I can't wait to read their next story so I stayed up like I said till 2 a.m. to finish this book loved every minute of it and I'm actually very thankful that I didn't start this book until last night because now I really really want to read the sequel and it's coming out on Tuesday it's released this Tuesday it's called Fury of Ice and I can't wait to read it so highly recommended Fury of Fire by Corinne Callahan Okay, another book I read, and yes, this one's a paranormal romance too, is called A Little Night Magic. It's by Lucy March. Now this is Lucy March, um, her debut novel, writing under this pseudonym. She has also written about nine other novels under um, Lainey, excuse me, <laughs> I have a sticky note. Okay, she also writes them as Lainey Diane Rich, and I was checking out her website, and I'm very intrigued by those books. She says she writes funny books for women, or books for funny women, or really books for everybody. <laughs> and I want to try those. I have read, excuse me, read one of her books um, that she wrote, co-authored with Jennifer Cruz and Stuart and as Lainey Diane Rich, it's called um, Dogs and Goddesses, and that's an excellent, funny, paranormal romance. So this one, A Little Night Magic, is paranormal romance, or other ones are more chiclet-ish, I believe. I picked this book up at Target. It was on one of those end caps that says, if you like this, then you should try this author. And I also was in, um, intrigued by the little quote up here by Susan Elizabeth Phillips. It says, fresh and funny, warm and sexy, I can't wait for more. And if you've watched this vlog before, you know I adore Susan Elizabeth Phillips. So that was enough for me. I bought the book and I read it and it stuck with me and I've picked it up and reread bits of it. I love this book. I want a sequel like yesterday. Um, the heroine's name is Olivia Kiski and she works in a Waffle House and she's a waitress and she's been in love with the chef Tobias for a few years they're best friends they watch movies together they hang out and when this book starts you find out that just about a week prior she threw herself at him and he turned her down so now there's some tension and she there's this great scene where she talks about how she put she may have put his picture up on the wall and tossed a dart at it and missed him and hit a map on the wall and decided why not take a trip, get away, move, start fresh because eventually Tobias is going to leave this little town and she doesn't want to be left pining and stuck and never move forward with her life. So she's all geared up to move. She's put her house on the market. She's ready to go. Make a change. And she doesn't have to go to make a change. Change comes to her. There's hysterical dialogue, very real, very true. There's comments about about body image and weight and food and love and and magic. This book has magic in it. She discovers that she is part. Um, she has magic in her DNA. She's a day magical, and she can change inanimate objects into critters. She changes the teacup into a bunny. I love that scene. Uh, and there's the, there's a person out there who's wanting to steal her power. So there's that mystery and intrigue and danger there. There's of course her relationship with Tobias, 
what's going to happen. And there's her girlfriends in town and the interaction between them. Um, her friends' names are Peach, Millie, and Stacy. <laughs> uh, and they live in Nottoway Falls, New York. You want to live in this town for a bit. There's, it's really, really good. Uh, <laughs> I love, there's this one scene, like this one is talking about skinny jeans and it's just so true. <sighs> it's just that I was already at my calorie limit for the day before I had the liquor and I want to go to Europe in my skinny jeans. What the hell are skinny jeans? They're the jeans that you buy that are too small so that someday you can wear them and feel awesome. He put his fork down and stared at me open-mouthed. There are so many things wrong with that sentence, I don't even know where to start. It's okay, this is advanced self-loathing. You have to be a woman to understand it at this level. He pinched the bit of denim above my knee. What's wrong with these jeans? His touch sent tingles up my thigh and I pulled my knee back a bit. They fit. <laughs> so, I highly recommend it. This book will make you laugh, make you think. Go get it. A Little Night Magic by Lucy March. All right, thank you for listening to me ramble about books. I love books and I love to talk about them. That's why I started The Book Tart. Visit my website, www.thebooktart.com, and take a look at. The June new release database, it has over 1,000 new fiction releases this month, and see if there's something you've been waiting for. You don't want to, you to miss it. Goodbye from the book chart.